There's a big, big difference between emotional objections and factual objections. Emotional objections are much, much harder to deal with. Today, we're gonna jump in and learn how we can deal with them. So what's meant by the term emotional objection? Well, some objections are based on fact, some are based on preference. When it comes to objections that are based on preference, they're often a lot harder to deal with. Let me give an example. If I said to you now, I don't like your t-shirt, I'm not wrong because I own the preference. Therefore, they're much more difficult to overcome because you can't tell a client that their preference is wrong. However, any preference is usually based on fact. So our objective with emotional objections is to try and turn them into a factual objection by questioning around them. Fundamentally, we're trying to reveal the customer's logic, or more importantly, the facts, why this is driving their opinion. This is really, really difficult. Now, where this becomes quite complicated is because the more you question down on someone's beliefs or the way someone feels about something, they often become quite protective about those beliefs as well. There's a thing called cognitive dissonance, which you may have heard of before, which is where you can hold two opposing beliefs at the same time and quite perfectly rationalize those beliefs in your own mind and live quite happily knowing that they're actually conflicting. This is where we need to be quite delicate. The type of questions that we use here is really, really important. It needs to be supportive it needs to be helpful. So let's start by talking about the tone that we need to adopt. When someone gives you an emotional objection, you almost need to be a little bit surprised that you've got that objection. If the customer feels like you hear this all the time, it's only gonna fan the flames of that objection and make them feel that they were right or ratify their opinion. So we almost need to be a little bit shocked by saying, that's really interesting. As you can imagine, we don't get that very often. So what I wanna do is just learn a bit more about that. And then again, the way I'm positioning the questioning around this is about learning what they mean or learning a bit more about the objection itself. So let's say as an example, the customers come up to you and said, look, I've got to be honest with you, Aaron, we just prefer the competitor. Now that's a classic emotional objection because they're telling you it's literally a preference. So I'd start by saying, well, look, that's really interesting. I appreciate you guys have come up with that opinion. It's not something we hear very often, as you can imagine. What I'd love to do is just to learn a bit more around why you made that decision. So when you say you prefer them, what exactly is it you prefer about them? And again, now what we're doing is we're delving into fact. They can't project emotion around this. They can only tell you the facts. Well, we feel that they do this a bit better, or we feel that they've got more of this, or we feel that they're actually more reasonable when it comes to this cost point. Then all of a sudden we start getting the reason behind the reason. And this is really, really helpful because we can sell against facts. If the, if the customer says, look, your product's more expensive when it's not, then that's a fact, we can overcome that. Or we can justify why it's more expensive. However, when they're saying to you, we just prefer this product, it's much more difficult to overcome. This may come as a surprise to you, but the reasons that people don't like things are often based on absolute nonsense. Studies on this are really, really interesting. As an example, most people dislike their best friend when they first meet them. Well, the reasons behind that are quite simple. You often see the things you dislike in yourself in them, and then eventually over time, you start seeing the things you like in yourself in that person as well. So the reason you disliked them initially was actually based on complete nonsense. Now, a really uh, simple example that I use is films. Like I'm a massive film fan, but when everyone's talking about a film that you must go and see, I get a negative association with that film because it's never gonna live up to expectation. As time goes by, I forget whether I dislike that film because I've seen it and I didn't like it, or because everyone was talking about it and I refused to go and see it. So someone will turn around to me and say, what did you think of Avatar? And I'll be like, I thought it was garbage, even though I've not seen it. Because I've built up this irrational dislike or hatred in some cases of something that I've not seen. All they'd need to ask me is, have you even seen it? And it would expose my logic to the fact that I've not even seen the film, but I dislike it. And this is the same often with customers. The reason they dislike your product or the reason they have a preference over something else is often based on something that's not necessarily true. So your objective when it comes to emotional objections is to, in a very nice and supportive and collaborative way, walk the customer through that logic and demonstrate that it might not be based on fact. And that gives a real good springboard to pre-close or trial close the customer. Well, if we can demonstrate that we can do X, Y, Z, is this something that you'd feel comfortable moving forward with? And all of a sudden, you've turned an emotional objection into a factual objection and demonstrated the facts behind how you can help or overcome that objection. Hope this has been useful. As always, subscribe, like, share, leave a comment if needs be. Give these a go and give some feedback on how it all went. And as always, happy selling.